story really begins when I was three. Well, I'm sure it begins before that, but <laughs> the significant pieces started when I was three. Um, I was uh, burned in a in a gasoline explosion, just a freak accident on our farm. Um, my sister and I had um, were standing outside of a barn um, where my dad was. Um, he'd been painting inside this barn or had been mixing paint inside the entryway, and he had um, a big bucket of paint, and he had an electric uh, drill with a paint mixer attached, and he um, had gasoline as a solvent nearby, and when he turned on the electric mixer, a spark flew from the cord and ignited the gas. And uh, because I was standing in the doorway and the, the flames just, it, the explosion just blew out the door um, and caught me full force. My sister had backed up around around the corner, um, and so she wasn't touched at all, thankfully, um, but it it caught me pretty full on. Um, so I was burned over 75% of my body, and most of that was third degree, which in 1974, five, that's a, um, that was definitely a near-death uh, situation when they had me at the hospital um, that night, the doctors told my parents that I had about a 10% chance of living through the night, um, and most likely I would not, and um, so they were preparing them for that. But I did um, survive the night and the next day or two until I was stable enough to be airlifted to Cincinnati um, Shriners Children's Hospital in, in Cincinnati, where I spent two months, um, two solid months in reconstructive surgery and getting skin grafts and recovering um, to some extent. Um, they sent me home then, uh, so this, this happened in June, they sent me home in August, and um, from that point on, my parents really stressed the fact that they wanted to have us, wanted us to be just a normal family. They wanted us kids to grow up in a normal house and everything to be normal. <laughs> um, but normal was also filled with a lot of um, physical therapy, a lot of uh, bandage uh, dressing changes. Um, for about four years, I think I wore um, what was then called a jopes garment. It was a tight um, elastic garment. I had a face mask. I had a shirt with long sleeves. I had tights. Um, and it was all a compression garment to, to compress the scars. Um, and I returned to Cincinnati almost every year for reconstructive surgery for about the next 18 years. <laughs> so that was really normal for me. That was, that, that was just how life was. I didn't really know anything um, before that. And um, so I didn't really think much of it at the time. It wasn't really until I was um, a young adult that I started to search for some meaning really to the to the situation and why had I gone through what I'd gone through. I, I grew up um, able to use all of my extremities. I didn't lose my hearing. I didn't lose any facial features. I was so, so blessed um, in so many ways to have um, been spared, I think, the worst of it. I've seen plenty of kids who've been burned far worse. And so, um, so on the one hand, I was like, okay, God, it wasn't it wasn't horribly disfiguring. I'm I'm a pretty well-adjusted normal kid. What was the meaning of all this? So I kind of entertained that question off and on as a young adult. Um, and so really the last 20 years or so, um, maybe not quite 15, um, has sort of been a, a back and forth conversation with me and God. Sometimes I'm listening, sometimes I'm not, but I've, I've been asking the question, you know what, what was the purpose of all this? Um, that definitely started me down the road toward my current career, which is in counseling. And what I've learned is that um, not only do I have a passion for helping other people who are hurting, um, but even as I was just preparing for this talk, I got to thinking about how how much deeper that really is. And I'm I'm passionate about helping people figure out their purpose, their story, and, and why they're going through what they're going through. Um, and whether that's the students that I get to advise um, or other moms that I get to meet, um, why are they where God has them right now? In, in scripture, in James and in, um, and in Romans, um, the writers talk about suffering and they also talk about tests and trials. And I, and I start to think about um, you know, a whole large set of discouragements and, and problems and things that we face in life, no matter how big or small, um, and that there really is purpose in those. Um, um, and for a long time, you know, the passage in, in Romans, uh, well, both of them, are really impactful because the, it's the idea that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And um, my mother would tell me that all the time. She's like, this is a character-building opportunity for you. And I'm like... I have more character than a Disney ship right now. Thank you. Similar to to reconstruction of the burns, which took you know almost 20 years, um, that reconstruction 
of my heart and my faith life, my walk with the Lord has been a very time consuming journey journey. Um, it's been full of stops and starts. He couldn't do it all at once and I wasn't paying attention all at once. <laughs> um, and some of it's been really painful. Um, some of it's been, um, you know, conversations like, you know, if you're a good God, why, why wouldn't you provide me with some nice man to date, you know, or if you were a good God, um, you know, any number of those kinds of questions went through my mind. And so there were definitely times when that heart reconstruction was very painful. Suffering is there all the time um, to some degree. Disappointments, trials, testing of our faith. Um, we're faced with that sometimes daily, um, sometimes not that often, um, but it's not without purpose. It's For me, it's usually been an opportunity to, to turn back to him and to remember that I can't go this alone. Um, so whether it was reconstructive surgery as a 22 year old college student, you know, um, or, um, you know, any number of things that I deal with today, that can be really dis disappointing, discouraging, difficult, um, to go back into college class with a bandage wrapped around my head. You know, I, that wasn't really all that comfortable at that time in life. Um, but if I could remember, and I wasn't so good at this then, but I am better at it now. If I can remember that, if I can just turn that over to the Lord, um, that, that he's going to pull me through this and it's, and it's not the end of the world. And there is definitely much more purpose involved, um, than I'll ever realize. And, and what I'm seeing now is that, um, you know, he's led me down this road of, of counseling, um, and in other areas of ministry, being involved in other people's lives. And I'm, and I'm hopeful that, that there are pieces of my story that will give hope to other people, um, and, um, remind them that, that even through the long haul, the Lord does not abandon us. And, um, he's been with me through this whole, whole process. And he's, um, yeah, I think he's teaching me something every day about suffering and about hope.